I knew this video would be coming one day, but I, I kind of hoped it would be after I finished the whole History of Board Game Co. series. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and I don't know what I did for the title or thumbnail, I don't. I may, I may have put down Board Game Co. as closing down, knowing full well, knowing full well that some of you would interpret that differently. I may have. If I did so, I apologize. It's not clickbait, it's real, it's real, it's, it really is happening. Let's, let's go ahead, let's take a step back, let's take a step back. I don't know what I did for the title or thumbnail, I'll decide that later. Maybe I didn't, maybe I did. Depends if I have a better one or a better option. But, here's the practical reality. Board Game Co., the YouTube channel you're currently watching, is, well, me. It's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and it started, for those who don't know, it started as the intent behind starting it was the goal was to be a social media outreach to the retail operation, the retail store, BoardGameCo.com, which I own and semi-operate, and have been semi-operating it for since 2013, since 2013. And... It very quickly took off past that. It very quickly became something that I enjoyed doing just for the sake of enjoying doing. And the first, if you watch my, my first like 20 videos, maybe 20, you'll see me saying things like, oh, you know, this video is brought to you by Board Game Co. by Sell Trade Your Way to a Better Collection. I said it flatly with no energy because I didn't know how to talk in front of a camera yet. I was still learning that skill. But those, those things quickly faded away. For a long, long time, I had... Little In my description, I had little notes, you know, a little link to Board Game Co. And you can't find those anymore. I stopped putting those in videos a long time ago because Board Game Co., the YouTube channel, quickly became its own entity, a thing that I love doing and simply want to do. Plain and simple. Board Game Co., the retail operation, is still there. Now, some of this stuff will cover more as I go through these this whole history of Board Game Co., whatever it is. I've been doing these videos. I did two already. There's probably two more coming. The history of me, how I got here, where I got those, all these things uh, from start to finish, my, my life growing up, my, my first years in married life and all those things, onto, onto things where it's, uh, you know, the jobs, the starting of Board Game Co., the YouTube, all those things are going to be part of a series of videos that I'm doing, which I think I have two more coming. And, and if you want that, you can watch that. This is not about that. This is kind of skipping ahead to the fact that Board Game Co. is a company that has existed since 2013 and it is closing down. It's finally closing down. And this is a bit of a conversation and explanation around different aspects of it. Some degree of history, some degree of, of explanation of different facets. I will timestamp things as usual so you can jump around to the particular section that in some way interests you. And it may not interest you at all. If you are a customer of Board Game Co., it probably interests you more. If you're not a customer of Board Game Co., understand that this is just a conversation around that, what it means for me personally. I guess I'll throw a timestamp down at the end, if I remember to do this, of what it means for me personally, uh, separately outside of Board Game Co., but that's not the main focus. The main focus is, is Board Game Co. I started Board Game Co. in my basement. Not a full history, a very quick history. I started Board Game Co. in my basement as I started to buy and sell and trade games for myself. And what started as me just trying to manage my own collection with overflow tools, tools like buying, selling, and trading, that very quickly morphed into me turning this into a business. Again, longer history, we'll get into that later. It turned into a business in around 2014. Started as a hobby in late 2012, early 2013. Turned into a full-fledged business where I moved everything. I moved 1,500 games out of my basement into a warehouse in North Carolina, and they've been there ever since, since 2014. And for a long time, the business struggled. When it was in my home, it was a lot of work. I was packing everything myself. I was doing everything myself, but it made money. I probably paid myself 12 bucks an hour, but it made money. It did a job. I brought in money with it, and great. When I turned it into a business, I was paying accountants and, and taxes and paying people and employees and warehousing fees, and suddenly, all the money I was making went out the window. In 2014, from 2014 through 2018, I made no money. I got free games, plenty of free games. I did not do nothing with my time, but I got no money uh, from in that time period. In 2018, I told my partner that it was time to close up shop if we couldn't make the company work. And we did a lot of things in 2018, specifically because it was a last hurrah. It was like, let's do this, let's make this work, let's see if we can do it. We redid the website, we started spending a lot more money on marketing. We did a bunch of things that we were like, we should do these things and we know we should do these things and we finally will because it's either that or close up shop. And the company started making money. Not a lot of money, but I went from making zero dollars a month and wondering whether I'd have to write the company a check that month into instead getting 500 a month initially, moving up its way to like $1,000 a month, which is not bad, not worth the time I was putting into it, not one bit, but it's not bad, it's, it's something, it's a return. And in 2019, 2020, and 2021, the company did grow to, no, that's not true. In 2019 and, in 2018, 2019, and 2020, the company was still growing and doing well. In 2021, it kind of stabilized. Didn't do poorly, 
in 2022 as well, where we are right now, it, again, stabilized. The growth we were seeing through those years kind of capped out and it just kind of stabilized into a slow degree of fluctuation. 2019 is also when I started the YouTube channel, very end of 2019. 2020, mid to late 2020 is when I realized I wanted to do the YouTube channel full time and I didn't want to do Board Game Co. anymore. Mid 2021 is where I told my partner, or early 2020, early 2021 is where I told my partner, I am no longer invested in Board Game Co. as a company. The time, the payoff for the time has never been there. It's never been worth the time I put into it just from a pure hourly stance. There's always been better options on the table, things I could do instead. And I just kept doing it because it was something I built. It was something I was close. It was something I, I hoped would grow, but I was not invested in it. The place I was spending my time, effort, and energy was investing in, in YouTube, in Board Game Co. as a ability to talk about and play games as opposed to sell and trade and buy games. And in 2021, early 2021, I told my partner that I wanted to start the process of closing up shop. I was prepared to give it time. I was prepared to give it time. I was not in a rush. The irony, by the way, the irony of this statement right now is, as I'm speaking, I just got a message from a, a someone on Discord saying, did Abecorn disappear? Abecorn is another used game platform that disappeared this past year. They also thought it was not worth their time, effort, energy. So kind of random tangent. But anyways, going back to where I was, in 2021, I told my partner that I was... I was wanted to start the process of closing of shop, but also I have a 50% partner in the company, and so it's not as simple as me saying, hey, I'm done, I'm out. And so I wanted to give him time to figure out the next steps, to figure out what the options are, whether the options were hiring other people, trying to proxy people in place to do the things I did, whether the options were finding another partner or investor, whether the options were liquidating all the inventory. I wanted to give him options and tools to figure things out because he is a partner in the company. That and the fact there's a degree of responsibility. There's a degree of responsibility around the way to close up shop in multiple facets. I have responsibility to my partner. I have responsibility to my employees. We have multiple employees. They all get a paycheck. I don't make, that's not true. I make money. I don't make money that's worth my time. Not in the slightest. But I do make money. Sorry, that's not the way I said it. I don't make money that's worth my time. But they they make money that is a full paycheck for them. And so there's multiple people who will lose their jobs from this if Board Game Co. closes as opposed to selling. Then, of course, is the people who use us. And this is where it gets interesting, and this is where we start moving into a bit of miniature drama, which is the fact that Board Game Co. as a company, since its very inception, has always had people who don't like us. Some unfairly, and some, well, all of this is my opinion, some unfairly, and some fairly. I think it's the reality of the situation, which we'll get to in a second. I think there have been many people who didn't like the fact that we existed. There are many people who don't like the offerings on the table. To a certain extent, we are the GameStop of used board games. If you come to us with a trade, a deal, or whatnot, if you want, if you want to sell us your, you know, I don't know, four hundred dollars worth of games, you might get an offer for one hundred twenty-five dollars, and you might be offended by that. You're like I can get four hundred dollars elsewhere, so sell it yourself. That's how it works. We need to make money. We can buy these games new from distributors. If you don't like the deals on the table, I understand it, but that doesn't mean you should dislike us. It just means don't like the deals. We offer what we think is a win-win at all times. We offer. It's not true. We offer what we think makes financial sense for us and if we could offer better and still stay in business we would do so unfortunately the reverse is true we don't make enough money we get transactions we say we have sales we do all those things our margins are terrible there's no overhead for me to walk around with something that actually pays me for the time i put into it in any reasonable sense we are cash positive we pay employees could we potentially grow and make the business more efficient potentially i don't know but for right now we are offering the deals that make sense and anything less would mean i would have left a long time ago so the practical reality is that people sometimes don't like us because of the offerings on the table. And you don't have to like us. That's not my problem. It's if you like us or don't like us, it's not my problem if someone doesn't like the fact that Board Game Co. exists. There have already been announcements on a few, on Reddit, on, on Facebook, there have been a few announcements about the fact that Board Game Co. is closing down because I've started to tell people we're no longer doing trades, we're no longer doing purchases, the company will stay open for months probably, unless we, a month meaning it could be six months that the company's open, or it could be less, it depends on a lot of factors, including whether we liquidate to another company or not. Those are all competitions on the table. For right now, the only thing that has officially changed is we are no longer buying games, we are no longer trading games, we are only selling games. We are starting the liquidation process, and we are not taking in new things. But that means people know. That means that when they post it on Reddit, when they post it on Facebook, you get a ton of people who are like, oh, those deals are crap anyway, or I tried trading with them and it wasn't worth it. Okay, kudos. That's totally fine. I understand that. I understand it's not worth it. There are many times, I've taken books to half-price books. I remember I took a stack of books one time to half-price books, and I offered it to them, and I was like, well, I'll never go here again. I don't resent them. It just wasn't worth my time. And that is what it is. And I understand that. We always offer the deals we think make sense for us that we can afford to do without losing. And sometimes the very nature of being a 
business that has to make money while having all these costs in between. We have to deal with shipping and employees and taxes and all these other facets, and even the boxes, all these things are costs and expenses for us. We offer the deals that make sense for us. And if it doesn't make sense for you, we respect your desire to not engage with that deal. But the flip side, and we haven't gotten to the people who I think have fair complaints. Those are definitely true. We'll get to that soon. The flip side of that conversation is that there are many people who really value what we do. I haven't checked the numbers in a bit, so this information is around a year old, but there was a point in time where we were 50% of the games traded on BoardGameGeek. 50% of the games traded on BoardGameGeek were going through BoardGameCo. Not 50% of the trades, 50% of the games traded, meaning a trade with BoardGameCo, a trade with our operation is generally larger because of the fact that we're doing this as a business. We don't have an overlap of 10 games here and 10 games there, and you're able to do a two for two trade. No, we do trades that might be like 12 games for eight games. We do significantly larger trades that involve a lot of swapping of games, and 50 percent of the games traded in the U.S. went through Board Game Co. We have a lot of repeat business. It's going to be hard to hear for people who have used us and don't like us. There'll be people who watch my channel who like me as a content creator but hate my business. That's totally fine. That's all good. I appreciate the fact that you're able to separate the two. But there, while there will always be people who didn't like us as a company, the amount of people who liked us and used us a lot and repeatedly, there's a decent amount. There are people who figured out that the best way to deal with repeating cycling of your collection is you either go item by item, trade by trade, trying to work the system as much as possible to get something that makes sense, or you just deal with the fact that there's some degree of loss, but a degree of efficiency behind that loss that will get you the deal you want and has become a trading warehouse for a lot of people. Since closing up shop, I've gotten hundreds of messages in the past few days alone from people who are sad to see me go. In the past few days alone, and people are going to be finding out more and more every single day as they come to the system and realize we are no longer trading. And that was the other reason I kept it open. The other reason I kept it open was specifically the fact that I do genuinely think that we are leaving a void in the board game space. You can call it ego. I call it the fact that 50% of the games traded in the U.S. went through Board Game Co. It's a fact. It's not a discussion. It's not an opinion. How that void is filled is a different conversation, but we did have the largest degree of used game transitionary whatever. Noble Night Games, I don't know what they're... I, they do, Noble Night Games is another used game place. I highly recommend them. Well, I don't highly recommend them. I don't know them. I've never used them. But they are the other biggest name in used board games. But they don't trade on Board Game Geek the way we do, so I don't know what their numbers are like. But also, if you're used Board Game Co., maybe Noble Knight's your best option at this point because, because it might just be your best option. There will be people who miss us. And there will be a void left. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to sell the business instead of closing it down. Because I believe I have a responsibility to my partner, to my employees, and to the people who benefit from our service. The part that's been hard, the part that's been very hard, is when I first told my partner a year plus ago that I was done, I gave him a year timeline. I said, here's the date when it's over. This is what I owe you. This is what I'll do for you. But here's the date when it's over. And we found an investor who seemed like a good fit, who seemed like it might work out well. And I kept extending the deadline a little bit, a little bit, a little bit because of the fact that it looked like we had an option on the table. The problem with that deadline, the problem with extending the deadline, and this is, where, this is the part where we start getting to the people who have legitimate complaints against Board Game Co., is the fact that I've been emotionally tapped out of the business for a long time, and I don't give it the bandwidth that I should. I don't. And I am usually the person who deals with a lot of the day-to-day, -day, as well as a lot of the overflow. I probably put around three to four hours of time into Board Game Co. a day, and a lot of that is dealing with overflow, and a lot of that, dealing, that is dealing with day-to-day -day stuff. We have customer service people who deal with stuff, but I am usually the last resort. Which means, practically speaking, I can do the day-to-day -day easily enough, but over the past year, the thing that has changed the most with Board Game Co. is the rest of the operation has done everything it's supposed to do, Nothing's really grown, but nothing's really gone downhill. But as I've spent more and more time with YouTube and had less and less extra time for overflow, when there are issues at Board Game Co., when you buy a used game and something goes wrong, and things do go wrong, we track our percentages. The percentages are somewhere around 0.5% right now, 0.05%. So like less than 1% of our games traded have issues, but they're used games and they do have issues. And when there are issues, someone will send us an email and someone will engage with us and we deal with all the complaints, but they are dealt with slower. There's a backlog at any given time of 20 to 40 complaints and we're slowly going through them and getting through them. We have a customer service rep who does it. I used to deal with the overflow now and I deal with the overflow here and there when I have time, but less so than I used to. And that means people have legitimate and reasonable complaints about the fact that the customer service at Board Game Co., when there's an issue, has gone down over the past year plus. 
It's a completely fair complaint. Not trying to defend it, not trying to hide it, trying to say, practically speaking, that is the reality of the situation. To which there will be people who view this, who see this video, who are like, well, in that case, if you can't give it the time it needs, you should shut it down. You're not wrong. First of all, that's why we're here. It's being shut down today, not because I gave up on the investor, but because of the fact that at the end of the day, it was always a question of who to disappoint and at what point. It was always a question of who do I owe a form of allegiance to? Do I keep a business open for the employees, for my partner, for the various people, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who use it on a daily basis? Or do I close it down because I'm not able to give it the full time I used to and want to, and I'm therefore disappointing a person a day in some way, shape, or form. I don't even know if it's a person a day, whatever the number is. The ideal answer would be I just give it the extra time, and I've tried but I'm burnt out in it. I'm very burnt out in it. It's something I've been doing for a long time and it's not worth the time I put into it. One thing I said, I said this in the BGG post about closing it down, it has never been about the bottom line. Uh, I, said, I said, keeping the business open has never been about the bottom line. And some people took that and read it. There's a whole little sub conversation of like, well, that means it's about the bottom line. No, no, no. Closing it is absolutely about the bottom line. Keeping it open was never because I made money from it. I never kept Board Game Co. open because it was a cash cow that I just took tons of money from. Whoever I cared, whoever got her in the process, I don't care. That was never the reason. I kept Board Game Co. open despite the fact that it paid me way too little for my time because it did pay me for my time. It did help. If it didn't pay me for my time, maybe I would have let it close earlier. Maybe I would have. But it does pay me for my time to a small degree. But more importantly, I think that there are people along the way who benefit, benefit from it more than I do. And so it's closing down. It was always a question of who to disappoint at what point. Who to disappoint, who to let down. And I don't know if this is the right answer. I don't. Maybe had we waited another two months, maybe the investor would have worked out. Maybe everything would have been great. And maybe the business could continue growing under someone else's leadership and command. Possibly done better with somebody who's invested, somebody who's growing, somebody who's trying to put money and time effort into a, in a way that's more than just a side business as it has been for me ever since I started. It's always been a side business. Those are questions I'll never know the answer to. Those are just the reality of life of tough decisions. And, and maybe I made the wrong decision. Maybe I should have closed it down six months ago or a year ago when I realized that in some way I wasn't giving it my full 100% attention. It's entirely possible. Again, I think there are people who have unreasonable complaints. Like if you don't like our service, don't use it. It's not a reason to hate us. And I think there are people who have reasonable complaints where something went wrong and we didn't resolve it as fast as we could have and should have. Those are reasonable complaints people to have. And so Board Game Co. is closing down. It's something I've been running for just shy of 10 years now. Just shy of, 20, of 10 years. I don't know exactly when it started, but again, late 2012 is when it started as a hobby. 2013 is when it continued to grow as a hobby. And 2014 is when I officially turned into a business. It's been a big portion of my life for a very long time. And I'm grateful for it in so many ways. I'm grateful for so many aspects of it. Not least of which this YouTube channel wouldn't exist if I hadn't started it to hypothetically promote Board Game Co. As far as what happens next, like I said already, we turned off trading, we turned off purchases. If you have traded with us or purchased us, I, I was hoping to do this with more heads up. I was. I was hoping to put out like a little bit of announcement like, hey, we're going to be turning them off in a month. This is the last opportunity to get them in. I wanted to do it that way. And the practical reality is I kept pushing off when it closed because the investor kept on being like, we're almost there, we're almost there, we're almost there. But we've been almost there for six months plus now. And so I kind of just gave up and said it is what it is. I was on vacation last week and a thread popped up, not a very big thread, a small thread, but another person with a complaint. And I was like, I can't keep doing this again. I'm letting people down on both sides, but I can't keep doing this. I'm on vacation. I can't even respond or engage or properly deal with this complaint. And, and I'm keeping this thing open for reasons that I think are legitimate concerns, but I can't keep doing this. And so rather than giving a notice, rather than saying, here's a month, rather than giving some sort of public press update about X, Y, or Z, I simply said that it's time to close it off. It's time to shut it down. Past the closing of trades and purchases, uh, we've reached out to a few people as far as potentially selling or liquidating off the inventory directly. Uh, depending on how those work out, we may or may not run going out of business sales. You know, we may run. I, I've, as of right now, if you're someone who wants to shop at Board Game Co., 
this is your last real opportunity. There will, if we don't liquidate the inventory entirely, there will start being a process of going out of business sales. Of hey, 10% off everything, 20% off everything, 30% off everything. Those will be slow and procedural, but also I'm not guaranteeing those happen because the more likely option is we're currently in talks with a few people as far as liquidating our inventory all at once. The practical reality is we have employees and we can't simply ask our employees to sit here unknown as we slowly liquidate. We may have to just go through a process of setting things up. Uh, we're figuring out options there. There are some people who don't mind. There's some people for whom it's part time. There's some people who we might be able to find other job options for, but it's it's a lot. As far as what it means to me personally, for me personally, it does matter. Despite my whole thing about the whole, um, it does not about the bottom line and it doesn't doesn't pay me enough. It does matter to me personally too. Although I'm hoping it all balances out. The practical reality is back when I had a full time job and YouTube and Board Game Co. Board Game Co. is absolutely not worth the time, effort, and energy. Period. Full stop. End of conversation. Now that I've left my full time job, now that I've left the primary source of of revenue I used to have, and I'm relying on YouTube and Patreon and YouTube ads and small degrees of sponsorship, so now I'm relying on that. The Board Game Co. money, even though it's not a lot, it still adds up to extra money every month. Money that is useful. Uh, the practical reality is I can't afford, even though it's not worth the time I put into it, I can't afford to simply have that go away and I'm totally fine. What I'm hoping happens, and I don't know until it happens, what I'm hoping is between the process of liquidating our stock, between selling the, the inventory, I'm hoping that I get enough of a, of, a, of a fund, so to speak, that it can proxy out the monthly amounts that I can maybe put into my mortgage and lower my mortgage monthly. Because I, I don't know. I don't know my options. I'm going to figure all that out. I'm not asking for money. I'm not in the slightest. I, I think... I think it's all going to be fine, and the reality has always been the same thing as it always will be. If I ever need to ask for money, I will ask for money, and if I get it, then I get it, and if I don't, then I start taking money from publishers. But we're not we're not there. This is not like a threatening conversation in the slightest. It's not meant to be the point. I don't want to take money from publishers. Uh, for myself, not for you. I just don't want to. But again, I think, for me, it's more financial stress or knowledge of things that are changing and things I have to be mindful of, but no real actions just yet. Right now, it's just about liquidating, seeing what happens. The interesting thing about liquidation is the first month or two, you make more money, not less. Because all those costs associated with buying games, with trading games, with shipping, all those extra costs I used to have, those go away because I'm not taking things in. And yet the money coming in is still the same because you're still selling. So the first, in theory, the first month or two, I should see higher degrees of sales. And then after that, it comes down to what we're doing as far as liquidation and or selling the rest off uh, to see how this plays out for me on a personal level long term. I guess where I am with this is overall is this is meant to be just an update. It's meant to be an update and a situation for those who care, for those who, if you don't care, if you just like, you know, hear me talk, whatever rambling thing is going on today, this is just an update. Past that though, I want to thank all of you in different ways. If you are a customer of Board Game Co. in any way, shape or form, I appreciate your business. I appreciate your business over the past 10 years, wherever you started, whether you started trading with us 20 years, well, not 20 years ago, whether you started trading us 10 years ago, whether you started trading with us two months ago, I appreciate your patronage. It has helped grow something into something that was bigger than I ever thought it would be, while also something that I think has so much more potential if, if somebody wanted to give it the time, effort, and energy to really take it to the next level. Use games always are and always will be a tough business, but there's also this is a growing hobby. And there's not a lot of options for used games out there. Like I said, right now, I think it's Noble Knight. We're leaving Noble Knight as the only option left that deals with used games on a larger scale. There will be companies that pop up. There have been companies in the past that popped up. They've never really lasted. There have been, I think there have been four or five companies over the 10 years I've been doing this that have popped up in some way, shape, or form to do this. And then they've lasted not quite as long and faded out. It is a hard business to be in. There are a lot of challenges. This is not a sympathy vote. I'm not looking for any degree of sympathy of any kind. This is the practical reality of if you want a used game marketplace that is more than just peer-to-peer, -peer, there will be sacrifices to have that. Whatever the cost base, whether they're, it's, it's, it's a messy place. It's a messy thing. And I'm curious and optimistic that one day, as the hobby continues to grow, I'm optimistic that someone will do it right. I think Board Game Co. got close, but I don't think we got close enough. I appreciate all of you who have ever bought, sold, traded with Board Game Co. I appreciate all of you who are here watching this video and have supported me in my new life venture. There is a degree of sadness for something that I spent 10 years building, going away, but the reality is I'm significantly happier doing this, having these conversations and these talks about board games, about the board game hobby. I started this channel as an outlet for Board Game Co. And so quickly, so quickly, it had nothing to do with Board Game Co. and became about, about board games, about the love of the hobby. 
It's my channel banners for the love of the game, and I mean it every single time. This is so much more satisfying than being in used game customer service. It's so much more satisfying. So that's it. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Uh, if you have any issues, anyone who is, if you are a customer, if you have outstanding issues or this or that, again, all issues are taken care of. It's just slower than I would like. And and any if you have any outstanding credit or things, we're not closing up just yet. Things are still moving and things are still happening. We've had people reach out in different ways, in different messages of different kinds, and I appreciate it all. This is just my public to the world update as opposed to a forum post here and a Reddit post there and a Facebook post there. This is just to anyone who cares. It's been an excellent ride. I'm looking forward to the next stage of my life continuing while this stage closes up. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Boardium Co. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.